you can kind of tell I'm a little stressed out. I hate when things get like this. This whole theft thing is now stressing me out even more because, you know, how do we replace the animals I lost? I feel like I screwed up. I really want these black-throat eggs to do well. It just adds insult to injury with what's going on here at the camp. Let's have a look, see what my boy's up to. There he is, he looks good to me. So uh, this is Bobby Rubino's cage. I put it together with uh, Tanner Serpa just this past summer. And as you can see, it's still empty. It's a real bummer. We don't have Bobby Rubino. He was my only black throat. And um, yeah, man, I'm still really bummed out about this whole thing. Um, no word on his whereabouts. And um, it's been pretty cold here in Florida. So if he was released, um, he most likely isn't gonna survive because we're getting down into, uh, honestly, the 30s. But that's not the only drama I'm dealing with as far as black throats. Um, unfortunately, I'm having some trouble with uh, the eggs that we had gotten from Jerry. And um, I wonder, or I think I may have screwed up because I think my um, thermostat was a little wonky. I think I had them at a higher temperature. And I wanna show you guys what's going on uh, with these eggs in the incubator. And I think that's why I've been having some problems lately um, with eggs uh, just dying. And I checked it out. I've lowered the temperature to 84, uh, which is the optimal temperature to have my incubator set at. It was up at 87, which is pretty darn hot. Um, we did hatch out some baby cherry heads, which is awesome, and they look fine and healthy. Um, so I'm gonna pull these guys out while I show you what's going on with these black throat eggs. And maybe there's some of you out there that you know have incubated uh, black throats, uh, monitor eggs, but I'm showing you what I'm doing. You see, these are collapsing and it's way too early for these to collapse. Now, what I was told to do, number one, is I did have um, vermiculite in the bottom here doing the suspended in, uh, incubation technique. The vermiculite is not necessary when you're doing that. You should just have water. So I changed it out to water. And what was happening is these have collapsed. And like I said, they'll collapse when they get close to um, getting full term, but they're nowhere near full term. Um, they were denting. So uh, a friend of mine told me to put about a dime sized bit of water in the dimple to see if it'll rehydrate the egg. I think the temperatures were too high um, because we've got humidity on the sides here. The humidity is right, um, but unfortunately, I think I may have overcooked the eggs. I don't know. And I'm willing to uh, listen to anyone who has more monitor experience to see this. Here are the others. There's only one egg that looks like it's just doing well. Um, the others are denting and that's concerning me. So look, this one's dented on the bottom. So it's, a, um, it's pretty stressful. Uh, it's been a few days since I've lowered the temperature. Uh, the other thing that's possible, it's possible um, that I may not, and see how there's some humidity on here? I shake that off because I don't want too much water dripping on these eggs. But um, we got the probe in here. It's a, uh, it just dropped down. We're gonna shut this. Uh, it's dropping down too quick. I don't want it to get too cold, but I wanted to show you guys what was going on with these eggs. And part of the problem uh, that's possible is that this was the animal's first time um, laying eggs. And sometimes when a female monitor is just starting out, they just start to lay eggs, um, the eggs aren't, they don't normally, they can potentially not go to full uh, term. Um, the thing is, is that I candled these eggs and the eggs uh, had veins in them, they looked all fertile. That doesn't necessarily mean that the embryos developing inside are strong enough to make it full term. I don't know. Um, I, I never really messed with um, the controls. I kept it set at, a, at, a, at the temperature I had it set. 
um, but I did lower it now and I think it may even provide a better opportunity for my tortoises as well. I may have been incubating too high. Um, and it's, to be honest, it's something that um, I neglected or you sometimes get busy or I get busy and I just keep this thing running as normal. And um, you gotta remember that even <laughs> The incubator is a habitat unto itself. It's its own little microclimate. So um, you got to keep a lot of attention on those as well. On the incubator as well and on the eggs. Um, I had to pull out a bunch of eggs because I noticed there were some uh, carrion flies, the little flies that get in there. So I had some uh, problems where I pulled out all the eggs that weren't good. And I, I started to just, you know, make sure everything was dialed in there. So let's have a quick look again um, and see if there are any other eggs that kind of need any of my attention. This enclosure here, this little container here, here it is, is the one where we were getting uh, some hatching out of the two cherry heads hatched out of these. These were laid a while ago. Um, you can see I just kind of have them set up right there um, and it works. It's just, man, I just, it's a pain in the neck, you know, sometimes things don't work. And now this whole theft thing is now stressing me out even more because, you know, how do we replace the animals I lost, you know? Uh, Jerry was kind enough to say that he was gonna give me two of these, but if any hatch, I don't feel good taking any of them. I want Jerry to have them because I feel like I screwed up, you know what I mean? Like these eggs didn't come to full term, it's my fault. So now this whole situation, look at this guy. Little adventurous little cherry head right here. But now I feel horrible because, um, you know, the eggs may not do well. So if there's any monitor breeders out there, I know I'm gonna speak to a few of them uh, myself and see what I did wrong. Uh, this is part of it, you know, you gotta learn. It's a learning thing. It's just such a heartbreak knowing that we were, you know, that I was ripped off and, um, you know, Bobby Rubino was my only black throat and he was special to me because he almost died and I got him back to health and now he's gone and now these eggs aren't doing well and it's really a bummer because, you know, I thought, well, I can raise up some more babies and uh, unfortunately, um, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So it just adds insult to injury um, with what's going on here at the camp. Uh, we're dealing with some really cold weather here as well. Um, I'm just kind of checking things out. You guys can come along with me. Um, we're only gonna get to, to like the low 60s today and then tonight it goes down uh, extremely, extremely cold. And um, you know, we're talking about 30s. So I've been pulling animals in uh, keeping them in the warehouse and things like that. Um, but I do want to go check on Slinky, as you guys know. Slinky is an animal that almost lost his life because of the um, cold weather last year. And I want to make sure uh, everything's working properly with him and Lagatha. So I'm heading on over uh, to this enclosure. Good old Slinkies. We've got um, more work that has to be done with the gator pond um it's just so hard man we just got to keep things rolling here uh we got to fill this all in that's happening this week we got to string up the uh cement and then hopefully next week we can get these animals so um that's going to be a big deal um so here we come to slinky's enclosure and you can see Slinky is still locked in his house. Um, I am gonna pull Slinky out. I'm not even gonna trust it tonight. This keeps him warm, but as you guys know, I'm now super cautious with Slinks, and I do not want this lizard to have any issues. None at all. So I think he's still hanging out in here. Let's just give him a check. I was out late last night. Whoa, almost dropped that on my uh, foot there. Uh, very high tech as you can see <laughs> but it works and that's all I care about is making sure Slinky is okay so that's what we're doing let's have a look see what my boy's up to there he is he's laying on his box he looks good to me we got a heater up here 
and a heater down there. I put cinder blocks and raised up, I raised it closer so he's more uh, sandwiched between the two heaters. He looks fine to me. Let's have a, oh yeah, he feels warm. That's great. So that's nice. But like I said, tonight he comes in. Um, I also raised it up because there was some water that was getting in through here. We had some rain and some water was getting in. So there was about an inch of water. I did not want that heater to be anywhere near water. It's a heating pad and that could be, as you know, disastrous. We don't want to shock the crap out of Slinky. Um, but on the flip side, the one thing that's interesting here is in the cooler weather, look at how beautiful these uh, aquascape ecosystem ponds are. Crystal clear water, I just let them run. Um, what I've done with the, the ponds, what I'll do with the ponds uh, in the front yard is, well, I'll show you what I'm taking into consideration. Let's have a walk. I'll just show you what I have to do with the water turtles. I run the well water, as you know, but I'm also gonna be shutting down the pumps. I'm gonna shut off the waterfalls. Now, that does stop the biofiltration, but it's important to keep the pond warm because when there's running water, what'll happen is that running water, as it drops in, it gets cold and it's gonna get too cold I don't want that water temperature to drop into the 50s because we've got some turtles that really need it to be a bit warmer. So I've got to shut down all of the uh, pumps. And, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, it'll stop running, but you can see, you can kind of tell I'm a little stressed out. I hate when things get like this. Um, the weather is just, you know, there's a big snowstorm up north, and unfortunately, um, that jet stream dips down low and brings us really frigid air. So here's what I gotta do. I gotta shut these pumps off. I do have livestock heaters in here. So my hope is that the turtles will migrate to the bottom and they'll be near those heaters. Um, and that's important, but we're gonna shut off the, we're gonna shut down our uh, pumps so that we don't lose any heat uh, through the waterfall, if that makes sense. The galops are in, the radiators are in. Uh, these guys are locked up real good. We just have them in here. It stays nice and warm in here. Um, I can't even peek in at them. We've got them all set up. It's, uh, it's just one of those times, man. You know, it's winter here at the camp. Uh, we've been lucky. It had been in the 80s for a long time, but now um, unfortunately, we are getting our weeks, our week of winter here. Um, so you just got to make these, make do. Um, on the flip side though, I just have to say, how awesome does this look with all the grasses growing around the pond? Uh, we've got some papyrus, we got a fern, we got little ferns popping up here. We've got some fungus, fungi growing right there. Um, this is you know, this cypress is rotting. We've got moss. I mean, you can't get better than one of these ponds. I love them. Uh, right now, all the fish, you can see all the cichlids are kind of down low. We've got a livestock heater in there as well. I'm gonna shut this down and I'm also gonna run well water through these ponds to make sure that they are in fact, uh, you know, stay warm. I thought this was growing out of the rock. That would have been very interesting, but it was just a leaf. No, everybody's just kind of hanging out down here. And um, yeah, that's what's going on, man, at the camp. In fact, what I can also do is start running some warm water through it this morning. We got it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and run some warm water through these ponds. And uh, that'll help them out from the day to about two hours of a drip will come in here and believe it or not, it does take the edge off. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to take the edge off uh, because these animals can come out and bask during the day. Their dark shells are gonna absorb the heat from the sun and they'll be able to raise their body temperature. So it is pretty amazing that even turtles, um, you know, from a tropical area, they have the dark shell, they're able to warm up. In fact, here go the sulcatas. These guys are just coming out. These are really smart. These guys come out, they'll lay in the sun, but if they get too cool, they just go right back in their heated house. So I don't worry too much about these guys. They've been in this enclosure for a while. Look at this. 
everybody is out. The other smart thing these guys do, they lay close to a dark object and they're getting heat radiating off that as well. So very, very cool. See, everyone's out and they're kind of doing their thing. But the real, the real problem is these eggs. Now I'm all stressed out. I really want these black throat eggs to do well. Hopefully we can hatch a few of them. I hope I can save them. If you guys know of anything I can do, any breeders out there, hey, let me know. Um, very important stuff. And um, we're all trying to learn, even me. I am uh, not, uh, I don't know everything and I don't claim to. And part of what I do on this channel is bring people together who know more than me. And that's the fun part about reptiles, is always being a student. That's the fun part of life. I always wanna keep learning. I always wanna do things better and better. And um, that's the whole purpose of being on Earth, man, is to just figure out as much as you can while you're here. And uh, hopefully uh, you make some good friends and they teach you as well. That's what I got going on here today, people. We're running well water through here. That's why this enclosure or this pond is a little foggy. Um, but uh, yeah, the turtles are doing well in here. Um, I just got to keep an eye on everything because these next couple days are going to be cold. And that's so stressful. Anyway, um, still feeling good even with all this drama, robberies and all that stuff. But I just wanted to say hello, uh, let you know what's going on. We are working. The case is still open. Um, the more though that uh, days go by, I just don't think I'm getting Bobby Rubino back. I am very thankful though that we caught one of them and uh, we got Inky back and um, you know that's better than a lot of other people who had their things stolen uh, did. So hopefully this saga um, will come to an even better end um, but unfortunately Bobby Rubino I believe he's lost so let's hope that we can salvage these eggs otherwise we got to wait till next year and um, so there you go kind of a bummer today's video but I'm still hanging in there and trying to do the right thing so thank you so much for watching uh, like and subscribe you guys are awesome this has been an amazing an amazing time for me with all of you that have reached out and shown your support from reptile breeders to the people that watch the show all of you you've really made it easier to get through this so thank you so much i'll see you guys soon let's keep our fingers crossed but at the very end of the day let's see if uh we learn from this i'll talk to you guys later bye